This episode of A Gentleman's Cough Law Podcast is sponsored by Phoenix Shaving and Audible.com. You are listening to The Gentleman's Cough Law Podcast. Listener beware. Rise and shine, the liquor store is open. I ain't got time for moping. I best be on my way Well, I still got time to save my reputation. Time to go day drinking in this dirty. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Gentleman's Golf Law Podcast. I am your host, Jordan Crowder. And with me, as usual, joining me from the Great White North is John G. Goodman. Good. How are you? And, <laughs> and with me in person is uh, Donovan Fowler. How are you guys doing? You're a little early on that. Yeah, John. Yeah, John. Way, way Still to screw good. things Still up. Good. Still good. How, How are, are you, you guys? I'm good. I'm doing well. This I'm doing is, well. This is the most disorganized. We talked about this before. Yeah, we, we talked about the podcast. <laughs> We're like, John's going to answer first, and then Donovan, and then I guess did. who screwed Where it all up? Yeah, it always happens where there's this awkward pause when I ask how you're doing, and nobody knows like who wants to start, and you just ruined it uh, this time too, John. So thank you for that. Yeah, way to go. You're very welcome. <laughs> let's there's start more off. where that came from. <laughs> um, let's start off with some housekeeping. I am drinking some uh, Black Rifle Coffee Company um, AK-47 Espresso Blend out of my Art of mug. Uh, how about you, uh, Donovan? Uh, that was a Perrier. Oh, uh, but I'm also drinking uh, Black Rifle Coffee and uh, a nice little bottle of Perrier. So you're two-fisting it. How about you, uh, John? I'm single-fisting a beautiful glass of cranberry juice in <laughs> a right? uh, Batman mug. Oh, that's looking pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, is that a mug or is that a glass? That is like a pint Does glass. Does a mug need a handle? Mm, I don't know handle. The, the rules. Yeah. <laughs> and I am... But sm- apparently I break them. <laughs> I am smoking uh, my pipe that I actually just got in this week um, from Briarville. It's actually an old uh, vintage, I guess you would call it an estate pipe, uh, from John's Pipe Shop in Los Angeles, which hasn't existed since the early 70s. Um, Making a comeback. They were around in the 20s. They were a big uh, Hollywood pipe shop down there on on Hollywood Boulevard. Um, so it's a little piece of L.A. history um, that I got there. It's and, very, it's quite edgy. Yeah, it's, it's pretty lovely. cool. It's a bulldog. It's kind of a dark red stain. It's got the kind of diamond shank. And uh, shout out to Rick uh, Farah, who, uh, who restored it for me from Briarville. Wait, you said uh, it hasn't existed since the 70s? No. I found it in an antique shop. Oh, I see. There we go. Very nice. Yeah. Yeah. And I had it restored. And uh, later on on the show, we're going to get joined uh, by my friend uh, Brett McKay from The Art of Maliness. He's got some new projects in the works, and we're going to talk to him about that. He's a good guy. He's a good Good guy. guy. Um, So what's going on with you guys this week? Well, the big news up here is there's a, uh, a construction worker strike. 175,000 guys walked off the job, costing the economy, they estimate, $45 million a day. Really? Holy crap. Yeah. Wow. I don't know what they're uh, protesting exactly. Um, usually it's burger more flipping money robots, or working conditions, or turnaround. Uh, if I were them, you know, not to, you know, infringe on your bathroom review coming later, I would ask for deodorizers in those Johnny on the spots. <laughs> well, those are doorways to hell. Well, a lot of people don't know this about you, but John used to work in construction. Um, uh, I swung a hammer. You swung a hammer. So he, he's, he's, uh, he's done some, is that a call? Would you call that a dirty job? I'm thinking of micro. Maybe it's yeah, a dirty job. Yeah, that would be a dirty job. A rough and you know, dirty job. He was a, a, a rough and job. <laughs> yeah. But here's the thing, though, about construction workers, right? Now, not all construction workers, but whenever you see somebody working on a job site, there's always one guy swinging a hammer or digging, and then three or four other guys around standing and watching. Is that a common thing on (laughs) construction sites? Well, sometimes you just like to watch. Big problem that I have with uh, construction workers is uh, is the cat calling. They just, can't call every time I walk by, <laughs> they just let loose, and it's like it's very degrading and yeah. makes me feel unsafe. Yeah, that was a being there reference that nobody seemed to get. Oh, you made a being there reference? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah that's did. right. 
I like to watch. That's that's great. Yeah. Great movie if anyone's uh, ever seen it. Hal Ashby. Uh, I try. And the great Peter Sellers. I didn't I you know, I didn't make the connection. I did not make the connection at first. That's um, okay. Nerds. Well, you uh Donovan, <laughs> you, uh, you know, I was house sitting this week and I, I got uh back home. You were house sitting yeah, my place this week. Who was doing the work here, yeah. Jordan? <laughs> you were house sitting my place this week <laughs> and I came home and I saw on my uh, watched uh, Hulu list um, a lot of America's Next Top Model. This, and I this learned is, something new about you. This is true. This is true. I had never seen the show before. And the night before you left, Lacey was watching it, who, for those of you who don't know, is, is Jordan's beautiful wife. Well, and uh, I kind of got hooked. It's a lot yeah. of hot girls buying... <laughs> You know, and entire banks. And, uh, you know, I was like, this seems fun. So I had it <laughs> on in the background. And it's actually kind of addicting. Uh, yeah. I, I've, I've been on a reality TV show kick in general lately. Yeah. So I, I think that has as much to do with it as anything. But, uh, but yeah, it was fun. Well, I l- I've watched a few episodes uh, with Lacey because um, she's a big fan of the show. But one thing that always annoys me is... Everything is about Tyra Banks on that show. <laughs> they come in from a commercial break, and there's like Tyra Banks pictures. What? She's always finds her way to weave herself into the uh, to the competitions, or it's like, oh, you got Tyra mail, and everything is Tyra, Tyra, Tyra. Jordan, what are you trying to say about Tyra? <laughs> okay, I don't think we have wait, a Tyra wait, Banks. You talking? You talking? Of course you don't. It's Canada. But you know, I think though on the show she does seem like she always seems like she's. She seems like she's uh, when I've seen her, like she's you know putting uh, putting on a little bit of of an act because she's always oh, acting. I thought you were gonna say wait. <laughs> no. I was like, no. <laughs> every time it looks like she's kind of letting herself go. <laughs> no. um, but oh, yeah. she does seem like she cares about the models on the show. At least I don't know. Like uh, after watching it a little bit more, seeing more episodes, like oh, she seems like a decent person. I mean, but I don't know. To me, it's like I I never know. It's like that that kind of stuff. It's like my my. Uh, rule with reality TV and with most uh, entertainment is just never take anything at face value. So who knows? I do not know Tyra Banks, full disclosure, but um, she seems like she's a pretty hard worker. I mean, she's basically built an empire for herself. Have you ever seen, have you guys seen this clip of she, um, she has this thing with her talk show. She's going to do a giveaway for the members of her audience. And as she's giving away her top beauty secret and underneath all their seats, she gives them a jar of Vaseline. <laughs> you, you get a jar, you, you get a jar, yeah. you get no, a yeah, jar. Exactly like that. Like, I think it started out like as a joke. Cause it's like, <laughs> Oh, you know, models, we use Vaseline. It's really cheap. And like, she made it seem like it was like such oh, a big deal. But I think she took the is joke that, too far. Is that the thing? Like that, that models, like slather themselves in Vaseline. I guess to, I don't to know. make them glow or something. I think that UFC fighters do that, but <laughs> oh, I didn't know. <laughs> but for she's different like, reasons. <laughs> but she took the joke way too far. It went on for like five minutes where mm. she freaked out yeah. and looked like she was like having a seizure about it. And, and yeah. at some point, at one point, like, oh, this is cute. This is kind of funny. And then you're like, this woman's insane. <laughs> <laughs> we should. You should write her a letter. Yeah. And just let her know that, that things are going off track. Terrible. But yeah, I, I I watched. I think I watched about like two seasons of it uh just running in the background and uh but then it got bored you know yeah. once the guys started coming in and i was like uh I'm, peace out i didn't know there was a guy <laughs> season there there's like a season where they, it was like they were like oh let's shake it up and let's have guys on the show and then it was like who wants to watch male models uh, that's not the kind of shaking you want to see <laughs> yeah. did you guys see this this week i don't know i i saw this in the news um that a woman bought a bag on ebay that contained moon rocks from uh neil armstrong's landing on the moon one question yeah what do they taste like (laughs) gouda or swiss Uh, i don't know i don't know is that still a thing moon is made out of cheese anyone (laughs) i never understood that have we debunked that conspiracy that's the main conspiracy going with the moon these days i feel like that should be an uh, adam ruins everything episode um but (laughs) last five seconds the moon is not made of cheese it looks like um she sent it to nasa for examining and I guess civilians aren't supposed to have these things. Um, hmm. And NASA wanted to keep it, but it was her bag. So she actually fought them in court really? and she got the bag back. 
NASA just wow. can't win these days. I, I find that NASA has to be making its money from uh, hats and T-shirts <laughs> because <laughs> it's literally like I've been to like probably five or six different events over the last like month. Um, I'm very important and popular, uh, but that, it, it, somebody's always wearing like a NASA hat or yeah. a, a NASA T-shirt. And I'm kind of like, what's the deal? Like, is this uh, this is like the latest hipster nostalgia? Yeah, like, it's like that and Bill Nye, the science guy. Like, uh, who, <laughs> like, that's such to me, the Bill Nye thing is such a, a hipster generation, uh, but, you know, millennial generation thing. But the, the uh, fact that he's considered like a real scientist. Yeah. Now. Well, and the irony is, is that like watching some of that show, I was like, who is this made for? Because they're like, <laughs> you know, it, it's almost like everybody, everybody collectively loves Bill Nye, or at least they say, they say they do. And then it's like he makes a Netflix show that isn't geared towards children, or at least it shouldn't be because it's got like heavy sexual, like they just, they're they talking about all this stuff. They've got like an ice cream orgy cartoon on there. Uh, <laughs> you hear about this? You, you heard Good about this? family fun. Uh, yeah, exactly. Fun for the whole and family. Then, and then it's like, you know, no, no self-respecting adult is going to want to sit or anybody with time on their hands isn't going to want to sit through this stuff. It's, it's just like, I have a NASA hat. <laughs> <laughs> of course you have he's a NASA hat. He's on a delay over yeah. there. The Saturn V is probably the single most impressive man-made object ever. Yeah. <laughs> Besides uh the mugs that we sell I, I don't on, know. online. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know this. I don't know this. I don't know my NASA history. <sighs> I drove a friend to the airport today that actually works for NASA. He that works that he's the Mars rover um, driver uh, operator. Wow, you're important. Yeah, I'm important. Um, but we should have him on the show because it'd be interesting to talk to him about. We that. Should we should? I want to wait. I want to wrap up what we were talking about though. What? What? Oh, the irony thing. Yeah, yeah that was something that Tanner Guzzi was talking about. Yeah, he was saying that you know, or maybe it's maybe he didn't talk about. It, but maybe I read something from him where it's like you know, the whole thing with the hipster movement is you're not committing to anything. Yeah. If any, if, if somebody doesn't like what you're wearing or something, you're like, Oh, it's ironic. Like, I don't really care. You know, yeah, like yeah. it's all, you know, you're too cool for school. All right, guys. Um, you know what time it is? Bathroom time. It's time for Sir Crowder's restroom review of the week. Oh dear. All right. Uh, this week I'm going to review, uh, as you guys know, um, I was out of town last week, right? I was in Texas, um, in in Galveston, for a uh, family uh, family uh, vacation. And then you came back and you kicked me out of my house. I did. I kicked you out of the house. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I'm actually going to review uh, uh, Joe's Crab Shack on Galveston Island. And here we go. This restroom fails to deliver the traditional comforts of your mainstream American restroom. The aroma of human processed crustaceans melanged with a low quality beer and urine overshadows the entire bathroom experience. On top of all that, the establishment's name, Crab Shack, is not what you want in your psyche as you use a commode shared with the general seaside public. Three stars for this poorly executed washroom. Out of, out of how many stars? Five out of five. Oh, that seems good though. You think that's good? All yeah, right, I I'll think you ought to. I think you ought to downgrade it. All right, I'll make it two stars. I agree. I'll Knock make it two that stars. Down a star. I'll make it two stars. Then it's two stars. Two stars. Have you guys ever been to a Joe's Crab Shack? Uh, I'm a little worried about how quickly you change your your star rating. <laughs> okay, I, I don't even trust anything you say, Jordan. I think your credibility is going down the toilet. To pressure. I don't know. I just uh, maybe I could be bought. Maybe if <laughs> Joe's Crab Shack gave me some free uh, Cajun uh, chicken tenders, I would I would bump up a do star. They, do they have like their own version of cheesy bread there? Or whatever cheese. I don't know. What was that, like cheddar bay muffins? I'm not that familiar with the Joe's Crab Shack franchise. This is my first time, uh, you know, going to one this time. It's it's fun for the family if you like seafood. I think I may have been to one once. the bathroom is no good. (laughs) No fun. All right. We're going to take a quick break, and uh, we'll be back with our guest of honor, Brett McKay of the Art of Maliness. Now, this segment is brought to you by Audible.com. And for you, the listeners of the Gentleman's Call Flaw podcast, Audible is offering a free audiobook download with a free 30-day trial. 
to give you the opportunity to check out their service. Um, now, they're a great website, and if you like listening to podcasts, you like listening to audiobooks. Um, and again, with this free trial, you can download any title you would like. Um, I would recommend If at Birth You Don't Succeed, written by my good friend and friend of the show, Zach Anner. Um, he's a hilarious guy, and he reads his own audiobook, which is rare. So that's a bonus. So get, download his book today. He's a guest of the show. You can get, listen to his book for free. Now, audiobooks are great. Um, they work just like, you know, listening to a podcast. If you like listening to podcasts, you like listening to audiobooks. Well, you're sitting there, you know, uh, cooking dinner or uh, you're, you know, at work, uh, you know, typing some emails. Or maybe you're you're stuck in LA traffic like I am, or maybe you're you know it's a weekend and you're just uh, sitting back and uh, doing some uh, Pinterest crafts uh, that you've always wanted to do that you've had there on your board just waiting for you to to, to tackle. Uh, you might as well listen to an audiobook while doing that. And and people don't know that you, you killed two birds with one stone. You made an amazing Pinterest craft, and you listen to the book. Now, I don't know which of our listeners are making Pinterest crafts, but um, there are some pretty manly crafts you can do on Pinterest. So go to audibletrial.com slash gentscofflaw to get your free audiobook download and your free 30-day trial today. You won't regret it. All right. Um, so glad to have this guest. Um been a fan of his for years and we've we actually worked together for a little while um brett mckay of the art of manliness thank you for coming on hey how's it going jordan thanks for having <laughs> pretty me Pretty good pretty good so how you been been good yeah uh yeah just been busy with life and all sorts of other stuff and uh been uh yeah it's been fun been, been fun. fun been been a fun life um well, for, for people, people <laughs> living, living the fun living life, the fun life. <laughs> um, for people that don't know about your site, I mean, I, I, it's not lost on me that I think a lot of my listeners have come uh, over because I have I used to, you know, direct some Art of Manliness videos and I was in them as Bill. So a lot of our audience know me from those videos, but some of my audience uh, might not be from the Art of Manliness. So Talk about the Art of Manliness. How did you start the Art of Manliness, and what's uh, you know what's that site about? Right. So I started in 2008. I was a second year law student, and uh, basically, the way I, I was in a Borders bookstore one night, uh, perusing men's magazines like I usually did, you know, on a Saturday or Friday night. And I was looking at the headlines, and uh, I realized that every month is the exact same thing in these men's magazines. It's like how to get six pack abs. I'm looking at you, men's health. Uh, <laughs> Sex tips, interviews with, uh, you know, female celebrities and what they look for in a guy, which I've never understood. Like, why is that useful? Like, why, <laughs> well, in case you, know? you ever had the chance. Right. Like, <laughs> here's what Marco Roby looks for in a guy. You know? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, and then, like, also just pushing a lifestyle that, like, no average guy could afford, right? Like, you, know, you read Esquire and you'll see, even Men's Health, you'll see things like, Three thousand dollar cashmere sweaters. It's like, I, what? I'm a broke that? law student. Even if I could afford it, I would never spend three thousand dollars on a cashmere sweater. Yeah. Um, so I decided, you know, this is lame. Um, I want to. How about I just start the men's magazine that I'd want to read? So uh, got a WordPress blog going, bought the domain name Art of Manliness, and started just writing content that I thought, you know, I thought was cool guy stuff. And uh, what I found out right away was a lot of other men felt the same way that I did. Uh, they're just tired of the superficial men's lifestyle content. Uh, so we quickly, uh, acquired a pretty big following and, uh, you know, here we are almost 10 years later and, uh, you know, we've got like 11 million page views a month, uh, you know, podcasts that's got 140,000 subscribers. And, uh, now we're just published our third book based off of the site. And, uh, it's what I do full time. Yeah. I didn't, uh, I graduated law school but I didn't take the bar exam, so I, I can't practice law. Thank <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. It's f so funny. Like a lot of, I feel like a lot of, um, 
I guess you, I, you, you would be an entrepreneur, but a lot of like people that have made their living or being entrepreneurs on the internet have that same kind of story where it's like, you know, oh, I went to law school or, oh, I went studied to become a psychiatrist or whatever. And then they end up, you know, having their own site. It's kind of a neat day and age that that can happen. <laughs> sure. <laughs> you know, so were your, what did your parents think when you said you were going to not take the bar and run a, run a website? <laughs> That's kind of crazy. So I didn't do, I didn't jump full time into the large man's right away. I actually, yeah. I, I knew I didn't want to practice law, yeah. um, but I did work uh, for like six months in the legal industry um, for Thomson Reuters. They're sort of a legal research company. So I, I did corporate stuff, not, not practicing. I was just basically helping lawyer, like law students uh, learn how to do legal research. Um, did that for six months. It was a good gig. I uh, had a 401k health insurance, but then um, eventually just the site got really big, took a lot of time and uh, something had to give. So I, I quit and that was like 2011 was when I, when I, when I went full, full time. Yeah. Well, I, I will say that I stumbled upon your site. It's kind of a weird thing. Like I, I've talked about this on one of our other podcasts, but I stumbled on it because I was trying to find a better way to shave because I was getting a little razor bumps and I fell upon your article. And at first, I honestly, I thought it was silly. I was like, what? How am I going to shave with one of those things? A safety <laughs> razor? Come on. But like the idea of it, like of using a brush and soap and that kind of thing, I tried that out and I was like, then, then I started, I went back to the site and started following it. I'm like, oh, this is actually a helpful, useful site. And um, I just I just kept following it and getting the email subscription. And my wife, Lacey, who you've, you've met, she would read the articles too. So it's like, it's called The Art of Manliness, but I feel like the site is just a general good kind of self-improvement site, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, a lot of the content we write uh, is applicable for both uh, males and females. We, we, but when we do self-improvement content, we kind of cater it towards dudes. Yeah, uh, it's like the tone and uh, the way we approach it. But I mean, really, the site's all about growing up well, like being becoming a, a functioning, well-adjusted adult. Yeah, because uh, a lot of people are struggling, particularly young men, uh, seem to struggle with that the most. Um, so that's what we're trying to do. And yeah. so we, you'll find stuff uh, how to you know how to shave. You'll find stuff how to you know uh, in conversations, <laughs> uh, right? <laughs> Uh, but also we all kind of explore like what it means to be a man, um, by looking to the past and try to finding, try to find the best from the past and what it means to be, because like a lot of people think like we need to reinvent masculinity. Like we got to come up with like the new man. Yeah. Like we've been trying that for like 40 years, right. With like sensitive ponytail, nice guy. <laughs> It's it's the it's, man bun now. It's the man <laughs> bun. You sit in a circle and you know, talk like, it was like Fight Club. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. The support group. <laughs> the support group. Like, maybe that helps some guys, but I think a lot of guys, they get just that's not, it's not them. They're not comfortable with that. Yeah. Um, so uh, instead of reinventing masculinity or manliness, we're all about reviving the lost art of manliness. So there's like, we've got thousands of years, at least in Western culture, um, where there's a, a positive ideal of manhood where it means uh, being, like, our, our idea is sort of the classical, from classical Rome, uh, ancient Rome, where uh, manliness uh, meant, like, our word virtue comes from the Latin word virtus, or virtus, um, which means manliness in Roman, <clears throat> or not Roman, in Latin. <clears throat> and uh, it, meant, it, man, it, it means strength, but also manliness. So for the Romans to be a man, uh, you had to acquire virtus, and that meant being strong and courageous, but also having temperance and prudence. So developing these virtues that allowed you to uh, be effective in the world. So that's what we're trying to bring back and yeah. uh, encourage in guys. Do you ever get, like in this kind of today's culture, any backlash with some of the, you know, kind of in the way of of, of defining manhood? It's almost like in this culture there's this – the idea of a man is kind of the man is almost like the the enemy and like when you watch movies and tv and like in commercials they're either the dumb guy or i don't know it's like there's almost been sort of like an attack on men and i, I don't know if you, if you get a lot of backlash from that but yeah. not really you know? um because uh, like when cuz we do we try to do our best in, in in making the case for it 
in a nuanced, um, we're not yelling at people and being in their face about it. Um, it's like we want, we're trying to convince people. We're trying to make a case, right? Yeah. Um, and so when people take the time to see what we're, you know, the case we're making for it, most are like, oh, yeah, I yeah. like that. I mean, it's interesting. I've had people who are say like, you know, I'm, I'm a hardcore feminist or whatever, but like the case you guys made, like I, I can get, I understand that. And yeah. it's, it's a reasonable case and all oh, right. Um, so I think that's cool when that happens. Yeah, uh, for sure. And I mean, I, I mean, I think it's a testament. Like I think a lot of, what have we gotten some backlashes from some guys online who think, you don't think like we're hard enough. Like you got to be in your face and just like yeah. take it, you know, stick it to them and like show them like, that's not effective. All it does, it just entrenches them back into their ideas that they have. They get defensive. Yeah. Um, and you don't convince them. You might feel cool, right? Yeah. It feels good to like, you know. Well, yeah, it's like, it's weird. Like, it's like so many, um, there's kind of years and years of kind of like pushing men back. And it, it's like created this backlash where people are almost like the ultra ultimate uh ultra, ultimate like alpha male like kind of idea all the time where it's like there's somewhere in between there we talked about this with right. tanner guzzi on one of our episodes right. like and, and it's kind of like in our name the irony of gentleman and scofflaw somebody who's gentle but also can be hard when it need when he needs to be and that's i don't know i think that's an important balance i feel like it's it's the extreme of two stereotypes that most modern males kind of find themselves being pushed towards and it's either like you know the beta male like kind of seinfeld-esque type <laughs> who's a little bit soft and like doesn't really care and is like nihilistic about things and just you know is not lacking discipline in a certain way and then the like like uber alpha male who's like in everybody's face and has to just be like exerting testosterone all the time and is obnoxious about it and it's like no, just be well adjusted, you know, which takes a lot of hard work and time to just get there. Be cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it takes, it takes hard work and time. And I think that's why your website's so great. I mean, I know my little brother who's in college, he has like really, I think built himself into, you know, kind of the young man that he is off of stuff on your website. So it's, uh, well, that's great to hear. Great. And that's like, yeah. that's why we do what we do. Yeah. That's well, it. What it's I important. find is great about it is it's, it's uh it's an accumulation of pragmatic skills and attitudes mm -hmm. that i think is accessible to anyone and yep. i think that's one of the big draws yeah for yeah sure. yeah that's that's what we're that's what we're trying to do like we're, we don't we don't have like i mean we have a point of view we have a perspective that we're trying to get across but again uh like shoving it down people's throat uh, I just don't think it's effective. So like, the way we like to do things, um, Kierkegaard, the Christian existential philosopher from Sweden, like he was like really anxious. Like he wrote a lot, a lot about anxiety, and he was just <laughs> he's, the guy had some problems. But um, he had this uh, idea of uh, indirect communication, um, and he says that's the most effective way to communicate to people. So instead of preaching to them and saying, "Here's how it is," and blah 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 blah, like you just have a conversation um, and you let kind of people in on the conversation and mm -hmm. that's actually a more effective way to uh, persuade people. Yeah, for uh, sure. So yeah, like a lot, I think a lot of men, particularly online, they're attracted to like going head on. Cause that's like the honorable thing to do. It's like the manly thing to do. You gotta like take a stand and like show who's boss, like whatever. But like my, my case is like, if you look at the history of like, let's say it was warfare, Let's let's go let's go battles right. Yeah. Most battles are not won direct on like these clashes head on. Yeah. The way they're won is through flanking or indirect maneuvers. Like you you go to the side. I mean this this goes back to sort of like what's the most manly way to to win a battle uh, it goes all the way back to ancient Greece. Like there's like the Achilles perspective. Achilles was like the like he was like the alpha male mm -hmm. uh, guy. And the, the honorable thing to do, the manly thing to do, was you, you go after the guy and challenge them in single combat, and you call them out, and like you just battle ma mano a mano. That was the manly thing to do. Odysseus uh, didn't do it that way. He was the wily one. You didn't. He was like, you know, you want to get the job done. I don't want. I don't care if I look manly doing. It. I just want to win. No. Uh, and so the way he, you know, 
he kind of got uh, the way he won was the Trojan horse, right? He used sort of deception and an indirect route uh, to win. And in ancient Greece, a lot of people thought Odysseus was sort of like a wussy guy because he did that. But like, he didn't die. Uh, <laughs> and like, he, won. <laughs> he beat Troy. Um, and like, you can see that throughout the uh, you know, rest of, you know, warfare in, in the Western world is like, there's this idea, like you got to like do it mano a mano, like, like George Washington, like, the, I, I just learned this, but like when the Revolutionary War first started, I'm kind of going in off on a tangent. Is this, is this okay? No, that's fine. That's what this is all about. We we, <laughs> we, we, we need a history yeah, lesson. We love it. But like George Washington, like the the Americans when the start of the Revolutionary War, they're getting their butts handed to them. Like they yeah. were like we we were pretty much going to lose the Revolutionary War. And part of the problem was was Washington and a lot of these generals on the American side. They still had this sort of. Um, like cla- ancient idea of what it meant to be a, a, a good warrior. And that meant like you, you just line up and you just, you go after uh, each other head on. Yeah. Um, but they kept like the Americans kept on losing because the British had just a, a giant army who were well-trained professional soldiers. And so finally, after losing a whole bunch of times, like George Washington finally got smart and decided, okay, I can't win the war this way. So he started, uh, sort of a war of attrition and started using more guerrilla tactics and that's kind of what turned the the page so getting back to uh persuasion i think the same thing happens uh, a lot of people want to go mano a mano because it just feels awesome and like you're taking a stand but like yeah. i just my perspective like you don't win you don't persuade you don't win hearts and minds that way you got to take a more indirect route yeah. so i would get flack for that but i'm not i don't I, I want to win. Like I want to, I want to spread what we're doing. Yeah, exactly. No, that's a good way to, to a good way to look at it. Um, yeah. And on your site recently, uh, you had a great article um, called why you should go to church, even if you're not sure of your beliefs. And it intrigued me just because all of us on this show, we're all men of faith of whether, whatever domin- denomination or whatever we're from. He's a Catholic. Uh, John, I don't know what you are. I, I, I guess prefer, I'm a Protestant. I, I prefer papist. I'm a mutt. <laughs> I'm a mutt. Um, yeah, I mean, that was such a great article. I wonder if you could give me like just a little bit of, of an overview for our, our, our listeners. Like, What are the main reasons why somebody should go to church? Uh, so I, I mean, the big reason is just, uh, for socialization. Um, I mean, it's one of the church is one of the few places, uh, in America today where you're thrown into people, um, that aren't like you and you have to often interact with them and figure out how to get along with them. Um, and, uh, maybe that's not to say, like, I mean, Martin Luther King had a good point when he said, uh, you know, Sunday's the most segregated day in America, right? Because mm-hmm. there's like black churches and white churches and what you know, Muslims and you know, whatever. Yeah, I guess Muslims meet on Friday, right? Um, I, I'm not sure. I got to brush up on my maybe. Muslim history. <laughs> <laughs> but um, we're talking about like you know, a lot. I mean, at least in my congregation, there's uh, folks from all sorts of background. You have yeah. upper class, middle class, poor people. We've got um, Latin Americans, Native Americans, African Americans. Um, so it's, I mean, like, I feel like we've become in our culture very, um, uh, siloed, right. We just hang out with people who, who are just like us, uh, every Sunday. And then the times I meet between the week, like I'm forced to interact with people who are completely different from me. And it takes a lot of, a lot of patience. Uh, it takes a lot of charity and a lot of grace um, to overlook, you know, things you're like, man, that's a weirdo. Um, <laughs> but, you know, but you do it. Um, so that that's, I think, is is the biggest reason. And there's just all these like benefits that come from um, just that social aspect of church. Um, you know, like there's just being around people is good for your, your psyche. Um so I mean that that was one of the big cases we made for it, and uh, that, you know, that's like a completely like secular case. Even if yeah. you like aren't a believer, like you could get something out of church just from the the social aspect. And it was interesting; we had a lot of people uh, in the Facebook comments that said, "Yeah, you know, I'm not really, I don't really believe in God anymore, but I still go to church for those social reasons." Um, yeah. which I thought that was interesting. That is um, interesting. It's it's funny because I I mean I go to a church in L.A. and L.A. is I mean a, a 
a population that's not you know super involved in church in, in general. I mean, it's 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 Hollywood. A lot of people leave small towns because they want to get away from kind of their upbringing. So there's a there's a there's a a, a a good amount of people at our church that are just kind of checking it out and that I think are going there for some of those reasons. But I remember thinking um, before in church, like thinking like, well, what like if I didn't have faith, what would be my reason to come? Um, on Sunday to church. And I remember thinking like, well, I mean, there's so many benefits that I get in, you know, my marriage, in my relationships, um, in being able to do, you know, stuff for the community, all these things that the church provides that regardless of whether or not you have faith or not, still is, I still think good for society in general. Yeah. It's kind of like, where where do people congregate? these days other than like social media. I mean, like I know whenever people are talking about meeting people around here, it's usually like at a bar or a club, you know, but it it doesn't (laughs) usually doesn't end well in those, in those cases. So yeah, it's, it's definitely, uh, it's important. Yeah. Right. Like when you go to a bar or club or whatever, like you're there to have fun and a good time, like at church, uh, you know, you're going to get a sermon, but there's also, it depends on your congregation, what kind of church you go to, but there's also opportunities like you're, you know, got to step in and, help and contribute and and serve yeah. um and there's not a lot of opportunities for that um for people um i mean there are out there but i think like people are like they're lazy right yeah. it's like yeah. they always think i'm gonna go like yeah i'm gonna like do the soup kitchen there's people who do that like i mean yeah. there are people who are just like i'm impressed by those people um but like for me i know i'm lazy and so like having church there saying like, okay we got this thing on saturday um Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna be there because yeah. I don't want to let people down. It's sort of you know it's yeah. a way to like burn the bridges and to make myself do something that yeah. I otherwise would be pretty lazy, you know, not not want to do. Well, it's like um, an accountability yeah. thing too. I mean, you know, when you're when you see the same people every week and stuff, it's like it's it's hard to you know to say, oh, I'm gonna skip it today. It's like, well, people are gonna notice I'm gone, and that's not. I mean, that's not why you go to church for to get to get the brownie points to tick off. Oh, I was there every Sunday this <laughs> month, but I mean, like, it does make you accountable to a community of people. You know? Yeah, yeah it does for sure, um, and I think it's interesting. Um, now, I, have, I have some, you know, friends and family who who are no longer, you know, they they no longer believe in God anymore and don't go to church. And they said, yeah, the thing they the thing they wish that uh, atheist had was sort of like church for atheists, right? <laughs> Where they, you know, they can just get together and uh, you know, you listen to they like I, they want a sermon. They'd be nice to like have some sort of uh, you know pastor get up there and atheist pastor and sort of like discourse that's you know, <laughs> and then uh, you know have some coffee and donuts afterwards and then go do some service which is interesting uh, there's actually uh, here in Tulsa there's a Unitarian church it's one of the bigger ones in the in, a, in the in America but they have like uh, humanist service okay <laughs> which, the, which is why that is basically for people who are <laughs> atheists um, they'll get sort of sort of a, a message from like you know Thoreau or literature and a TED talk, TED talk maybe. <laughs> it's not even TED talk. Like no, I, that's, I guess that's another like I, like TED talks become sort of like our new sermon, right? But like yeah, those but, are all it's all very like self centered. It's uh, true. It's yeah. all, how can I be awesome and like how can I do this one thing? It'll change your life, right? And so it's <laughs> like you know, do the power pose and. Yeah. Uh, but like, <laughs> yeah. uh, I think it's this humanist service, they're like, they're more like, you know, how to be a, just a good human being, but without God, um, if that's your thing. So, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I think uh, it's just getting people together and meditating on something bigger than themselves uh, just has a lot of benefits. So. Yeah big fan of it and serving yeah, other that, people too i think i mean that's a big part of it right yeah, right yeah for sure okay so i was listening to your podcast and you had uh uh in the one called the philosophy of frugality and your guest had mentioned that uh in america people have this sense of self-reliance and you know being handy and being able to build things and fix things but in britain where your guest came from he didn't see too much of that uh and is it simply a cultural idiosyncrasy in your mind, or do you think it could be connected with the perception of uh, government's role in our lives, or you know, should we be gunning to be Tim the Toolman Taylor? Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. I mean, like, I mean, America definitely has that rugged individualist idea about ourselves. 
But I think in practice, I think most of us are not rugged individualists. Uh, <laughs> hey, this uh, guy watches America's Next Top Model, and he's <laughs> he's, what? he's not with anyone. Once. He's not. You're not even, you don't have a girlfriend right now, and you're watching it. I'm trying to find one. And that's you know, I, I, uh, what better way than to watch a bunch of uh, top models, you know, line up. You know, you got yeah, something to talk about. Yeah, I, I, I read he's the, those, articles, those yeah, interviews. Female celebrities. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Uh, so, yeah, I think Americans have this idea of, you know, being the rugged individualist, like the pioneer, like you just got to do things on your own. Um, if you grew up in Britain, you probably didn't have that uh, idea because you didn't have to really do stuff on your, on your own because you weren't out in the middle of nowhere. Um, but, I mean, I think you made an interesting point. Uh, as you try to, like, do stuff on your own, like that, there's cost to that right like yeah. time cost and even money cost like whenever i try to do like big projects on my own i end up spending a lot more time and a lot more money on it if i just called like an expert at it yeah. um yeah. <laughs> so i mean uh, i like to do it just for the sake of doing it. i'm like okay it's, whenever i do those big projects like this is just something fun for me it's yeah. <laughs> i'm gonna spend a saturday and this is gonna be my entertainment uh but if i need to get something done and done fast and well then uh yeah, definitely hire somebody to do it. <laughs> that makes that makes sense. All right, uh, and Mike, you probably won't smash your thumb. <laughs> we'll, and you'll make like five trips to Home Depot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the wrong at day. least John, at least five. Trips. John's the type of guy that when you like lift up a picture frame from his house, there's like six different uh, <laughs> nail holes at different heights. Seven, seven. <laughs> it's that you know. It's that that stylish. You know. It's the uh, <laughs> <laughs> idiot chic. <laughs> idiot chic. Like that. Idiot chic. You've got a new site out. Um, the strenuous life. Which we know, obviously, is the you know the the, the Teddy Roosevelt. Um, he, I mean, was that a book of his? I believe that was something he wrote, right? No, it was a speech he gave. A speech he wrote, yeah, uh, yeah. It was called the Strenuous Life. It's an interesting speech. Um, he just he basically he was uh, his strenuous life was sort of a philosophy of doing hard things because that's what um, builds strong people. Uh, and it was sort of a reaction against uh, what he saw and a lot of other Americans saw as sort of um, the wussification of Americans thanks to industrialization and urbanization. And so you saw in the late 19th century, early 20th century, uh, like hunting got really big, camping got really big, um, sports got really big. That's when the Boy Scouts started. And these were all uh, ways, sort of uh, part of this whole strenuous life movement. So uh, what we're doing with the strenuous life, what we've been working on, we're still in the beta testing. We're doing a lot of changes to it. It's been a it's been a project. Like it's been it's like a huge undertaking, and um, but we're still working at it. What we're trying to do is uh, kind of capture that ethos, yeah, uh, and help men basically do the stuff we write about on the art of manliness. Like I, I actually want guys to do this stuff, not just read about it and think. Hey, that's cool. Yeah, uh, share this on Facebook. This is awesome. And then I'm not gonna like go eat do some it. Cheetos and I, play some Xbox. I'm a man now. <laughs> um, so what we've done is we've uh, created uh, 50 badges with different requirements uh, based around different skills. So we have like a, um, uh, an outdoorsman badge. We have a barbell badge. We have a, a, a like a, a gun badge. We also have things like orator badges and like salesmanship and uh, host badge and things like that. Okay, cool. Um, so yeah, you can you can do the stuff, earn badges, and uh, sort of like scouts for grown men. That's pretty cool. I mean, is it's there a, a way that idea. these guys have to prove that they've done that? I mean, how can you? Is it just an honor yes. system? Or? So a lot of it's honor system, but they like for each badge they have to like post at least some like like a photo of them doing something. So. Okay. I think well, I'm just going to get a green screen. It's like, why? I mean, why? Why? Why cheat? For, yeah. 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 Well, and that's something like, like, uh, you know, I'm an Eagle Scout and, and that was like a great experience for me going through the Boy Scouts and, and definitely taught me a lot of lessons. And that's something that like I hear from uh, a lot of, you know, my peers and, and older guys all the time when they're like, uh, I totally regret not finishing that, you know, yeah. I'm like not, you know, getting that accomplishment or not going to the Boy Scouts. So 
to give that kind of an opportunity to uh to to men of all ages is is a great idea I think yeah that's, that's really cool yeah. interestingly enough um in canada i was in beavers <laughs> that was you, our scouts the, the higher highest rank there is the queen scout <laughs> is it i don't even it's know not, i never made it that high people, it's not the it's the queen scout. oh man oh man i remember it went beavers and then cubs and then scouts scouts and then queen scouts i think is what it was but i don't know i just i just remember thinking this is this is such a stereotype so why are we perpetuating this so if you're in canada just skip those scouts and just go right to the strenuous life <laughs> well, well that's pretty cool when do you plan on on uh, fully launching it, or can people join in on it now or uh they can get on the waiting list uh i mean i was hoping it'd be launched by now uh, no. but uh there, i've learned we've had to like just basically rejigger the whole thing after we had about 150 guys go through that. Um, so it's been a lot of programming and, uh, so yeah, you can get on the waiting list. I'm hoping to have it up and running like in about two or three weeks. Okay, cool. Uh, people to access. So, uh, check it out. Awesome. Strenuouslife.co. Awesome. We'll put the link in the show notes too for that. Um, and I mean, you have a new book out, right? I mean, why don't we yep. hear about that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, it's the illustrated art of manliness. And, um, so if you've been following the site, you've probably seen these illustrated guides we've done with illustrator Ted Slampiak. Uh, Ted's a cool guy. He's a really talented guy. Uh, he used to be the illustrator for the little orphan Annie comic when it was oh, wow. still around and he does storyboards wow. for, uh, films and TV shows. So he did, uh, the storyboards for breaking bad oh, wow. uh, and the most recent Terminator movie that was, Filmed, he's based in New Mexico, so like anything okay. that's ever shot in New Mexico, he does a lot of the stuff for it. Mm, that's cool. Um, and what I love about Ted, he, he, he does a great job. Like I, I'm a big fan. I, I'm a, I collect um, vintage men's magazines from like the 50s, 40s, those, and 60s. Those are hilarious. <laughs> yeah, the covers on those are just like like flesh or like weasels rip my flesh or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> that's, yeah, that, that's the class. And like, wasn't who was it? Was it? Led Zeppelin, not Led Zeppelin, Alice Cooper. Didn't oh, yeah. he have like an album, like Flesh? I don't know. Anyways. Oh, yeah, probably. <laughs> uh, <laughs> He'd be the right one, one these, for that. One of these, yeah, that would have like these sort of like illustrated how to's, and I wanted to do something like that for the Art of Manliness. Um, so we've been doing that since 2011. Uh, so we've done a couple hundred of them. And so with the Illustrated Art of Manliness, we've taken the best ones we've done and uh, added a whole bunch of new ones that have never been published on the site and made it into a book. So awesome. uh, it's available right now on Amazon and Barnes and Noble. That's Sweet. awesome. I, I remember, uh, it's funny you mentioned the breaking bad thing because I remember a few years ago, I think there was a tutorial on like, maybe it was how to roll up sleeves or how to right. tie or something. And there was a drawing that looked like Walter White on it. And I thought, oh, yeah. I wonder if that's an Easter well, egg. That's and they had like, I said like Heisenberg on the Oh, did the it? Top. That's yeah. right. That was cool. <laughs> Ted's really good about dropping Easter eggs like that. <laughs> now I got to look for them in the book. I got to see see where they where they where they're placed. So, so that that must have been a big undertaking putting that together. I mean, how how long did it take to compile all those and put it into a nifty book? It was a year, a year and a half. And um, I mean, I was doing that at the same time. I was trying to put together the strenuous life. Uh -huh. And, um, so that, <laughs> so you were living the strenuous life, <laughs> right? Yeah. I don't recommend doing that. Um, and then just keeping the regular art of manliness stuff going, Oh wow! Uh, but it was worth it. it I, I think I thought it turned out great. Yeah. I've, I've looked through kind of what the, the preview on the site and it looks super cool. All right. Uh, right now I'm going to go to a little segment called listener mail. This is the part of the show where we read feedback or questions um, from our social media. And we actually got a lot for you this week, Brett, from uh, uh, we teased that you were coming on and a bunch of people sent some questions. So if you don't mind, we'll ask you some of them. Is that okay? Right. Ask, ask right. away. Okay. Um, one guy here, Italian Classic Shaver on Instagram, wants to know, will you run for political office? <laughs> uh I've actually thought about it, at least on the state level, yeah. uh, because a lot of the guy. I mean, if you look at your state representatives, like you'd be surprised, like who gets elected, uh, uh, and it's a lot of dum dums. And <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you just like. I mean, we just had this guy uh, who got arrested for um, having uh, got caught with a, a teenage male prostitute. 
oh, man. Uh, with marijuana. <laughs> this is a guy who's like you know, this hardcore conservative guy oh, gosh. Um, who, who uh you know kind of was you know was fighting like you know passing bills like making marijuana uh, possession even uh more penalized and it's like stuff like that you yeah. know it's just like if i ran for office it wouldn't like I, I don't know what my agenda would be but it'd be like don't do stupid stuff like i'm not <laughs> i'm not going to embarrass our state <laughs> Um, Your slogan would be "Be cool, <laughs> be cool, <laughs> guys, be cool, oh, man." I, I know <laughs> what party you'd run for. You'd run for the bull moose party. The, yeah, the bull. Bring back the progressive party. The, yeah, the, the deep progressive party. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, we got another question here from uh, Courtney Scoffs. She says she wants to know uh, what's a nice way for women to tell men to dress better and take pride in their appearance, especially fathers. Uh, I would just send them a link to the art of manliness <laughs> <laughs> and then to say, I think you like this site and don't say that you're sending there for the style tips. Okay. Uh, Cause really, <laughs> again, going back to our original conversation about direct and indirect communication. Uh, if your wife said, honey, you dress terribly. This is how I want you to dress. The guy is obviously is going to completely ignore and do the exact opposite. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, and then she said, "No, just check out this site, and he'll he'll read an article about shaving with a straight razor and throwing an axe, and like this is pretty cool." And then he sees <laughs> something about how to dress well. It's like, okay, that's cool too. I'm gonna check that out. So that would be my advice. Just send them to the art of manliness. So it goes back to being wily. You gotta, yeah, you gotta yeah. get them in there indirectly. Um, yeah, wily. This one, he's uh, this one guy. He's written on the show before. Soaring owl and sons. He wants to know. Uh, where he got that sweet axe from the picture we posted. There's a picture of you in a suit holding an axe by your side. Uh, <laughs> that, that was a, a birthday, a 30th birthday present from my wife. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, I so, forgot the name of the company. Oh, Best Made. Oh, best they're made. great. They okay. have the best uh, catalogs it's, ever. It's, they're really, I mean, it's, I mean, it is sort of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, hoity toity. I mean, really, it's like a $300 axe. <laughs> yeah, oh, wow. yeah. It's they, painted, you know. <laughs> <laughs> like, I've used it once outside, but mainly it's just decoration. <laughs> you just hang it above your mantle. Yeah, like, I'm just like, I don't want to spit. I don't want to, like, I don't want to. This is a $300 axe. Like, I don't want to. <laughs> I got care of this. Yeah. Oh, we got another question here from uh, Reynolds Strong. He wants to know. Um, how he got so jacked and strong this past year. Oh, okay. I know that guy. <laughs> he, he is my coach. And got jacked and strong because he's been telling me what workouts to do. <laughs> well, you've so, yeah, been doing the starting strength thing, right? Yeah. So, uh, Jordan, you and I went down to Wichita Falls, Texas, to do some videos with Mark Ripito, the author of Starting Strength. And it's been some of the most popular videos we've ever done together. Um, yeah, I go back and I check like how many views they've gotten and it's crazy. Yeah, I'm always surprised too because they're kind of, I mean, they're edited, but they kind of, you know, they're, they've got a lot of information in them. Usually those ones don't do that well on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> right. No. Um, and they're well done. Like uh, actually Matt says uh, whenever he uh, brings on new clients and she wants to show them how to do those, like he uses the, those videos that you did. Oh, awesome. Um, well, so you. kudos to you. Well, um, so yeah, I started doing starting strength after that. Um and so it's been about uh, two years. I started working with Matt uh, a year and a half ago, and um, he's an, he's a starting strength coach. He heads up starting strength online coaching. And uh, since then, I uh, mean, I've gotten a lot stronger. Um, I did my first weightlifting meet, and I deadlifted 533 pounds and squatted 420 and shoulder pressed 201 pounds. Wow! Uh, so Two it works. It, the stuff works. If you're, wow. if you're interested in that, check it out. Starting strength online coaching. That's awesome. I got to start doing that. I got to start strength. <laughs> That's what I got to do. <laughs> I've been hiking a lot lately, but I'm trying to get trying to get strong. Um, get strong. So I got to do that. I got to find a the problem is that I think the closest thing of theirs is in like Santa Monica or something. So I'll have to find a way to do it locally. Go to a gym locally and do it. Um, uh, we that leads into another question. He wants to know when you're going to resume uploading videos on YouTube. Please and thank you. <laughs> Okay, yeah. Is that, was that Ron so, Swanson? <laughs> <laughs> Please and thank you. 
Yeah, this is a question I get asked all the time on Instagram because uh, I I just like we st- I just stopped doing them all of a sudden I didn't tell anybody <laughs> I, I didn't know there was like etiquette like uh, YouTube etiquette you should be like keep abreast of your I was like okay I'm just gonna stop because I'm gonna do something else uh, what happened was I, I was telling you know, Jordan you know this like I just got busy with a lot of other stuff. Uh, the book and then the podcast is really taken off and he's more time of that working on the strenuous life. Um, and then also video is just hard. I mean, like, I think, I don't think a lot of people realize how much time, uh, goes into making a good video yeah. and money too. Right. Um, yeah, for sure. you know, your talent, I got to pay you for your talent. And, um, a lot of people also don't understand is like, uh, YouTube's hard to make money. It's on. true. Yeah. They've really kind of screwed creators recently with right well i mean we say screw creators but again it's like it's also kind of a free platform <laughs> we're kind of lucky to get the advertising <laughs> from it <laughs> but they but just like, change the uh, rules on everyone <laughs> right yeah but like they, they, they're they're i mean i there's a great the like, youtube is digital sharecropping right yeah. like you're, you're providing this content to youtube and they're making money off of it yeah and it's oh it's free you get you get this here's this plot of land it's free but like we're gonna t- take all <laughs> yeah this, that's how sharecropping works. Um, <laughs> so yeah, uh, I mean, it was it, the videos were fun. Like they, they. I mean, I was really surprised uh, the response we got. But I just had to, I had to stop doing something because I got just getting overwhelmed with everything and videos because it was the the thing that the made the least amount of return on investment and because it took so much time. Um, also, I mean, like for me, like when I had to do the talking into the camera. I hated filming. Like, I, <laughs> filming day was like I was the grumpiest guy <laughs> in the world because I would just like say something and like no that sucked and I gotta like, re say it and like no that sucked too and then uh no that sucked um, so I, I didn't enjoy it. Um, yeah, that makes it hard. <laughs> it makes like- it hard. Like you guys, I mean, I feel like you guys. I don't know. You guys just have a natural talent for on screen, uh, presence and acting, uh, mine was very belabored. Um, well, it didn't come uh, off that way. What do I, what do I do with my hands? I don't know. What, yeah. what, what. <laughs> I, I know it didn't come off that way. Cause it took like five hours to yeah. <laughs> think. Um, but yeah, so uh, we're actually putting up a video soon. I'm, I'm finally like letting my subscribers know like what happened to me. So uh, I'm not regularly. I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm not uh, totally eliminating the possibility of doing YouTube videos, but they're not going to be regular. I just don't yeah. have the bandwidth for it right now. Um, but yeah, I mean, if something comes up, we're like, hey, let's do a video for this. I'm all for it. But like right now, I just, I mean, I just don't have the time for it. And those, those will be the best videos too, because you're not just doing them to come up with a video for Friday, because that's what right. happens with a lot of YouTube channels. No, I mean, the Art of Manliness channel wasn't like that, but there are a lot of YouTube channels where it's like, this was clearly to just fulfill a quota <laughs> this month. <laughs> it's Friday. Yeah. New videos go up every Friday. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, so people want to find you. Where can they go? I think this is an obvious question. Uh, they go to artofmanliness.com. There you go. And follow Fever them. Com, <laughs> follow Art of Manliness on all the social media stuff. Instagram is a lot of fun because you post a lot of fun stuff there. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. Instagram is one of those where it's like YouTube. Like I feel weird doing it. Yeah. I, feel I, I, I just Instagram, I, mean, I don't mind like posting like pictures of like other people, but then it's like a picture of me. I'm like, this is weird. Yeah, Brett selfie with the duck lips. I've never done selfie. I've never done, <laughs> I'm never Snapchatting. Done selfie. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, right. Snapchat. I'm on Snap. Snap me, guys. <laughs> Whenever it's something like there has to be a picture of me, I'm like, here, Kate, you take the picture. I cannot. <laughs> I cannot hold the camera and take a picture of myself. It's and that's when do. a stranger runs away with your phone. <laughs> hey, exactly. can you take a picture of me? Yeah. We've actually had pretty good success with Instagram, I think, out of all the platforms right now. It's like the least controlled, right. I think, in terms of advertising and stuff. You can still get your name out there without it being, like, you know, siphoned off by the kind of paying to play with, like, Facebook right. and all that other stuff. Algorithm. Also, the other thing I like about Instagram is, like, I just feel like the culture there is a lot friendlier. Yeah. Yeah. Does I don't know what it is. If people, I don't know, like Facebook and Twitter, like Facebook is just like the sewer. Like it's just, <laughs> it's, it's weird terrible. though, because it's not as anonymous as Instagram though. That's the weird thing, right? <laughs> it's a weird thing. You're like you have people, it's like, 
you know, they, people say like, oh, if, people, if you had to show your face, you wouldn't say it. It's like, no, there's there's Bob Smith from Scranton, <laughs> Ohio, saying <laughs> the most terrible thing. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> At least it's honest. <laughs> <laughs> and when he runs for office, it'll be pulled up eventually. Right. <laughs> well, what he said. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Brett, for coming on. We really appreciate it. And we'll have to have you come on again whenever you have certain projects or when you have certain subjects you want to talk about. It'd be great. Yeah, it was fun. Or if yeah. we have to fill a quota on a Friday. <laughs> <laughs> Brett, can you fill in? <laughs> All right. Well, thanks again, man. Uh, you have a great weekend. Thanks, guys. This part of the show is brought to you by Phoenix Shaving, makers of the most excellent aftershaves, shaving soaps, and all things traditional man. One of my favorite products of theirs are their aftershaves. Phoenix Shaving intentionally blurs the lines between traditional aftershave and classic cologne. Each batch of aftershave cologne is created by using traditional perfuming methods, giving the wearer a high dose of quality skin food matched by the staying power of berry white. Now, I tell you, this stuff is amazing. It'll it'll make your skin feel great after a shave, and the alum and menthol just removes all all irritation and razor bumps. Um, they have classic barber scents and even more creative soap and aftershave fragrances. Like my favorite is the tombstone scent. It smells like leather, tobacco, and gunpowder. Pretty unique. So ditch those vials of chemicals you buy at the drugstore every month and grab some artisan soap and aftershaves from Phoenix Shaving. Go to gentlemanscofflaw.com slash shave to help support the show and get some fantastic manly grooming products. Phoenix Shaving. Shaving outside the box. And now we're coming to a close. Another um, great guest. Uh, it was great to have uh, Brett on and hopefully he'll come back on in the future. Um, cause he's, is all, he's a mover and a shaker. He's always doing stuff. He's a man's man. Um, and you know what time it is? It's time to announce the winner of our last week's giveaway. All right. You guys want to give me a drum roll? Drum roll. I'll give you a kazoo. Like okay. when, once, once you announce it. All right, here we go. And the winner is Backy and the bowl is the username on Instagram. Backy and the bowl. So Backy and the bowl, you are getting a, a Phoenix shaving, uh, Cavendish after shaving cologne, courtesy of our friends at Phoenix Shaving, and uh, just keep an eye out for a direct message from us on Instagram so we can get the right address for you. Also, this week we are giving away um, Cad after shaving cologne again from Phoenix Shaving, uh, which uh, John is a pretty big fan of. There, aren't you a fan of that Cad? Uh? I am. I have the the shaving uh, soap, yeah, and the after shave, and I gotta say. I feel better with it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think I'm taller too. Sorry, that was the kazoo. It was a little late. It was supposed to celebrate. <laughs> it was supposed to celebrate the, the winner. A little or, late. But, but yeah, the cat aftershave is kind of like an old school barbershop scent. So if you are interesting in, interested in winning that. And if you're interesting. If you're an interesting you're person interesting, with a good personality and some, some good looks. Um, yeah, go. enter in. The contest will be listed in the show notes on Instagram. You can go there and find out how to enter. And we'll announce the winner next week. Yeah, I love their stuff. It's great. Now, if you are a fan of the show and you want to help support the show, um, you could join us on Patreon and support the show for as little as a dollar an episode. Plus, um, if you join us as a patron, you get a free sticker, a little sticker with Scofflaw there on it. If you join us. If you join us. Also, you could get some merch off of our shop if you go to gentlemanscofflaw.com and click the shop link. <laughs> You can get some T-shirts. You can get uh, that fine mug that uh, that uh, Donovan is uh, drinking out of right now. And uh, you can get uh, punk rock pins. You can get stickers. You can get uh, pint glasses, flasks, anything you want, uh, but mostly those things. So go to our website and check those out. John, you are a gentleman and a scofflaw, my friend. You too. Donovan, you are a gentleman and a scofflaw, my friend. And you are a... Kazoo noise. Uh, no, I, 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 I concur. Both of you. Right. I'll, I'll switch it up. Jordan, you're a gentleman. Uh, John, you're a scofflaw. All right. Now All you right. guys have a great week. This has been the Gentleman Scofflaw Podcast. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram 
Subscribe on iTunes or your favorite podcatcher. Visit us on the interwebs at gentlemanscofflaw.com. Captain says it's ice on the river. We ain't getting home if we don't break through. So damn cold, I can't help but shiver. Rise and shine, we got work to do. Hey!